In this video, I'm going to go through how to make money with NFTs, in particular, how to flip NFTs. Now, I'm not going to really talk about exactly what an NFT is or bore you with that. We're just going to talk about actual strategies. Off the cuff video, I have no idea what your level is when it comes to understanding NFTs. I'm just going to go for it. And in the comment section, if you want me to expand on any of this in future or you like this type of content, please just let me know. Um, I've been doing it for a short while now and I'm getting pretty good at it. So that's why I wanted to kind of show you what I've learned. Um, one of my best flips I did earlier this week where I made over $12,000 just buying and selling one NFT and that was over just the space of a few days. In fact, most of my flips have been literally just holding for a few days and selling for sometimes a very good profit. So the place you need to be if you're interested in flipping uh, NFTs is OpenSea. So OpenSea.io. Here's where you can search for all of the collections that are available. So if you click on explore, you click on all NFTs, you can see everything kind of loads up here. Now, the best way to kind of do this is to go after collections where there's a lot of volume. I do everything based on analytics. That's why I think I've got a good grasp of this because of my previous history when it comes to stock trading. I used to even buy and sell cars. And in my businesses, which are selling on Amazon, we use product research. So for example, when we were searching for things on Amazon, what I teach is exactly how to analyze the figures using software. And we look at things like sales graphs, the trends at the moment in a particular niche, revenue and sales figures, the, the fees involved, etc. All of that is important because really, even in online retail or any business really, a lot of the time you're buying something and then you're selling it for more. And it's no different here except in my opinion, it's a really, really good time to get into this because it's just so early. So anyway, I won't bore you with the, the kind of history of my background. We can talk about that in a different video. But what you want to really go on are the, the rankings. You want to go after those collections that have a lot of volume and I'll explain to you why in a minute and we'll get straight on to some strategies. I'll show you a very easy strategy to start off with. So what is an easy strategy? So these are all of the um, big kind of collections at the moment. A lot of you who know about NFTs will have heard of things like CryptoPunks and Board, uh, BAYC here as well, Sandbox as well, Ape Kid Club, etc. Now, a couple of these I was involved with recently, and I'll show you a couple of transactions where I, I actually did really well. But what do I look for? So a few different things. Generally, I'm looking for collections where I can get in reasonably early. Now, I'm not looking to mint at the moment. And what I'm really looking for is what is the price doing once it's on the secondary market? So once it's on OpenSea, because a lot of these will have been minted already. People uh, buy the NFTs first, at usually a lower price, and then they come and they tend to sell them here on OpenSea. So to give you an example, let's go on, say, the Crypto Bull Society, which was one that was trending a lot recently and it's still doing really well. Now, when you, when you go onto the dashboard here, you'll usually see a price low to high. Now, the great thing about OpenSea is actually better than a lot of marketplaces I found because you could do a lot of your analysis on here anyway. You don't need other fancy tools. However, I do use a few, a few tools which I find very useful. Now, if you go onto here and you click on items and you click on buy now, you can see what is the cheapest possible NFT available in this particular collection, which is this particular crypto bull number 5320. Now, should you buy it or should you not? That's you know one question you need to consider. Is it worth it? What you should be looking at when you're looking to flip is can you make money on this and preferably can you make money on this in a reliable way and in a way that's short in terms of time frame. You don't want to hold on to this for two years and hope for the best. And the thing with crypto coins is a lot of the time that's kind of what you're doing. Even if you look at the technicals, you look at the fundamentals, NFT flipping is completely different, which is why to be honest, I love it. It's my new kind of favorite hobby, my new thing I do my kind of spare time at the moment. So with this, one of the strategies I use is very, very simple. Let me just zoom out a little bit. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the floor price, which is 2.85. So that's the cheapest price available in this collection as buy it now that we can see. The easiest little strategy or trick and one I've used and I've made good money on is if I go into a collection, a well-known collection with a lot of volume, we'll talk about volume in just a minute, and I go into buy now and I randomly check it out any time of the day and I'm here in the UK, so sometimes the market can be slow, sometimes you can get some really good deals. And what if the first one was 2.85, but then the next five or six NFTs in this collection are 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, etc. So one of them is significantly underpriced compared to the, the rest of the floor. 
So what does that mean? So let me just kind of give you a visual representation because I, like I said, I don't know if any of this is going to make sense to a lot of you watching. So again, please comment below if it doesn't and I'll make separate videos on that because I love talking about stuff like this anyway. So very easy strategy. Let's say the one available, the cheapest one is 2.8. Let's ignore what traits it has. It doesn't matter what traits it has. Let's ignore that for now. And then the next three are 3.5, 3.5, etc. This is one of the best strategies and this is one I've used and it just seems to be really easy money to be honest with you. Obviously all of this, you know, you're buying stuff, there's a risk, there's no, no guarantee you're going to be able to sell it, etc, etc. But with this one, literally I could buy that for 2.8 and I could immediately put it on sale. What am I going to put it on sale for? 3.3 or 3.4. Why? Well, if I put it on sale for 3.3 or 3.4, what's the market going to look like on OpenSea? Well, it's going to have mine there and it's going to have the other two that were 3.5 and 3.5. And if somebody just wants to buy a crypto bull for the cheapest price possible, especially if over the longer term, over seven days, the, the floor price is going up and up and up and up, they're going to snap this up within minutes or an hour. And you can actually look at the activity to see how often people are actually buying. So straight away, I've made 0.5 Ether. It doesn't sound like a lot, but um, when you're looking at it in Ether terms, but in dollar terms, that's a lot. That's $2,000 odd dollars which you made in probably an hour or two just by monitoring regularly the marketplace. So it's kind of like trading in a way. If uh, any of you, I don't know if you've had experience day trading, but I've had a lot of that in the past. So you basically, you're, you're kind of watching the uh, orders come in here to keep an eye on uh, what's happening in the market. And you can see it almost in real time when you see stuff like this happening. So that's one strategy. Very, very simple, very easy to do. Now, which kind of markets can you do it in? This particular um, collection is excellent because if you look at the activity every few minutes people are buying crypto bulls and it's a nice variety of prices people are buying ones that are much more expensive as well a lot of people are just trying to buy for floor price some people are buying them on auction but generally very very healthy numbers you see a lot of fours sixes fives etc and the floor price we can see is only 2.8 so that's a good sign because you need liquidity. You need people to be actually genuinely interested in this and buying these types of things. That's what's pushing the floor price up of this particular market. So that's one excellent strategy that you can use. Very, very simple, but sometimes it's the simple strategies that work really well. Another strategy you, you can use, again, we'll just use the, the same one as an example. It's another one I've done. Scroll to the left and have a look at the different kind of categories and traits. So each of these bulls will have traits. So if you click on one of these and you go under properties, you'll see and it gives you the rarity there. What percentage have that particular trait? Now this one, Polo Jacket Blue, is actually a little bit on the rare side. Um, and if you click on this, if you click on where it says clothing, Polo Jacket Blue, it'll show you all of those in the collection. So out of the, um, the full collection, only 52 have this particular design and you can sort them by low to high and then you can click on buy now to see which ones are available and see the cheapest. Now, you can actually do the same technique here, although it's riskier because now you're going into a sub niche. So people who are only interested in buying these possibly rarer items. And what you can do here, again, if you see the, the first one a lot cheaper than all of the rest. So in this, you're not really seeing that. But let's say this was only 2.8, but everything else was 5, 7, 9. Then there's a chance you could be getting a, getting a good deal there. But the problem with this one is you may have to hold a little bit more longer term. There's no guarantee you're going to get a sale because we're talking about higher prices here. We're talking about rarity factor here. But before we were just talking about buying any crypto bull. That one you're going to sell quickly. These ones will take time. So let's choose another category just as an example. One of the other very rare ones. I mean, I know this collection inside out because I've been trading this particular collection. But one of my favorite ones were the ones, uh, the neck options. So in particular, Golden Dragon and Golden Medusa. And in terms of buy now for these, let me just uh, take that filter off. You'll see only four available, which is quite rare, so it's very popular. And you can see the prices it. That doesn't mean they're gonna sell for these prices. So ignore people who just put extremely high prices on their products. They're doing that because they've no intention to sell for now anyway, but on OpenSea, it's easier to lower your price. It's not very easy to increase your price. You have to kind of cancel your listing. You'll be charged gas fees, etc. But let's get on to the really good stuff. Let's get on to kind of what I would call slightly more advanced analytics. So one of the tools I use, which I'll share with you today, I'll, I'll share another tools in uh, other videos. But by the way, just, just on a separate note, if you're thinking, what the hell are NFTs? Why are people paying literally tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars on these? It's the value. It's the rarity. It's the fact that a lot of people want a particular thing. And it's the fact that they're seeing an increase in value. If you think of things like historically Pokemon cards or something like that, it's the same thing. To be honest with anything, even like buying stocks, 
uh, in a particular company is kind of the same thing. The only slight difference is you get uh, benefits, for example, dividends from stocks. Well, nowadays, even with NFTs, a lot of the new collections, you're starting to get extra benefits. For example, they give you more free tokens in the future, or potentially you can actually play to earn or other ways of actually earning money with your NFTs. So keep that in mind as well. It is sometimes helpful to look at the use case, but I'll be really honest with you. But so far, the way I've been doing it is I don't really care at all what their community is or what they're hoping to do. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. I look at the data alone. I just want to see how much are these selling for and how much have people actually paid for them, actually paid for these previously. And a lot of that you, data you can get easily anyway on OpenSea. For example, let me clear all of this. In the same collection, all I do, sorry, let me just get to the collection again. Instead of price low to high, let me just go on highest last sale. So these are the highest selling ones. And you can see here what people have actually paid. And you can see where it says last 35. That is, these two are the kind of most famous in this particular collection. But you can see people have paid big money. And that's my other tip as well. Go after collections where you actually see people pay way of the odds for the rarer items. That's usually a good sign. Not that it's a scam, but that it's not somewhere where the, the creators are just trying to make a flip themselves in terms of make a lot of money and then suddenly the floor price kind of tanks and people are left holding bags of nothing, which happens with these collections. I've literally seen it happen. So be very careful about that. With this, there's literally no chance of that happening when you're seeing how much people are actually paying. When you actually do have a quick glance at the community as well, you'll see that this is just a really good collection and it's holding value very well. The floor price keeps going up. So these are the kind of signs you see. So one of the tools I use is called IC.tools. So for example, we can search for the collection here, Crypto Bull Society here. Now, why I like this is it's way better in terms of analyzing some of the numbers and figures quickly. So what I can see here are all of the transactions for this particular collection. So I can go back 30 days because they've launched not long ago. I think it's been about a week, week and a half. So yeah, so first, first of December-ish. And immediately what I'm looking at is I'm kind of drawing an imaginary line below this entire graph to see what is the floor price. And you can see that slowly, slowly it's been rising. So people who are getting in very early here are easily making returns, good returns on their investment. In fact, let me show you one of mine for this was a different collection so this particular collection, this was from Ape Kids Club, but this is my transaction. So this was me four days ago. I'd actually bought one of the tokens for 1.49 and I sold it for 4.49. I'm not keen at the moment to kind of share my whole portfolio or anything like that. I'm not even sure if it's safe or it's a good idea here on YouTube. <laughs> but anyway, um, that was three Ether. So in, in kind of money terms, just putting it in a chart here, it's about 13,000 US dollars on that one flip in just two, three days. There are gas fees involved. There are costs with this. So a few hundred dollars, you can take off that, but still a massive amount for one flip. I think you'll agree. And a lot of it is I'm getting ideas from uh, tools like this, which are really helping. So not only does this help you with that uh, in terms of the floor price, but what you can do is if you click here on outliers, you can see people actually paying way over the odds for um, so some of the parts of this collection. And what you can do is you can actually click on these and it will open up in OpenSea. So you can see what did they actually pay for? So what did this person pay six Ether for? And you can see uh, the style there, click on properties and you can see what are the uh, rarities. And another tip I have for you, just because it's rare alone is not enough. So you might get three or four traits that are equally rare. However, what I've noticed, again, this is my experience flipping these NFTs. I've noticed people in general, human beings, for some reason, we tend to go for things which are a bit more uh, blingy or brash. So for example, in those collections where you see a lot of gold or Bitcoin signs or silver, those are the traits that tend to do a lot better. Let me give you an example. So let's go to Ape Kids Club. This is one where I've been doing particularly well. I love this collection. Really, really good collection because again, it's uh, it's got lo lots of items, 10,000, which tends to be not always the best sign. However, if the demand is there, then it's strong and the floor price has consistently gone up. If you look at activity, what you wanna see is transactions all day long. Every few minutes, transactions right through, and you're seeing different prices here. You're seeing some that are a lot higher, which is a good sign as well. But in this particular market, if I go back onto items and I scroll down, and then if I click on mouth here, and if I click then on gold teeth, for example, which is very, very rare anyway. But if I click on gold teeth, and then I click on buy now to see what's available right now, there's just six available and look at the crazy prices people are charging. They're, they're, they're charging that crazy prices like that. I'm not saying they're going to get it, but the reason is, is because of the gold factor. 
that is it's not the rarity alone, it's just the fact that it's gold for some reason. You can add, I would say, 20, 30, 40%. So keep that in mind if you're seeing collections where you see these kind of options, but the rarity score is kind of even. Uh, another few tips for you. So let me give you uh, tips for some collections that aren't so good. For example, there was this one recently, and I actually bought one NFT in this collection, and I'd quickly look to sell it because it's not, it's not very good. So this particular collection, it has 1.9 thousand items. So that that's fine, you know, that's kind of on the low side. You've got the owners there and the floor price has been dropping. If you look at activity, activity is on the slow side, but these are sales, very, very slow. But if you click on listings as well as sales, you'll see there's way more listings than there are kind of number of sales, although it is kind of calming down now. But on here in particular, let's go back onto items. What you can see if, let, let's go to something that's a little bit more rare. So let's click on headgear, let's go on Batman mask or Samurai warrior, for example. So a couple of the more rarer kind of items. Now you'll see people selling their items here. So this person is selling for 0.29 ether. Now what you can see, another kind of tip is on filters, I always add listings. So I don't know if it's gonna happen here. No, I didn't actually see it here, but a lot of the time you can see people reducing their price significantly. Let me see if I can find a better example of that. So let's go back onto here. Let's click on, um, let's click on buy now first. So let's click on this one, for example. This, this looks like a decent one, uh, reasonably rare here. You can see Batman mass only 0.94, got the 4% VR as well. And then you don't get much information there, but if you click on listings, here you go. So you get a bit more information. I mean, when it was first minted, after minting, somebody had slowly reduced their price to then make the sale for 0 0.09. And then sometimes what you see, you're not seeing it here, but a lot of people, in these kind of weaker markets, weaker collections, they price quite high and they've slowly been reducing the price, which means either they're just desperate to sell anyway, or they're just not getting a buyer. And you can see, even though the price seems reasonably good for something that's a rare item, there's no offers for this either. So another thing I glance at when I'm looking at something with these particular traits is what are the offers here? Usually you see an offer sign kind of flag up here. Also, what were the last sales? Now, not always the most reliable marker. If somebody's paid over the odds, that's gonna be obviously an outlier, but you wanna look and see what people have actually been paying. Where it says last underneath, you can see what people have actually paid for it previously. And I just found another one here in the same kind of filter. And if you scroll down, there's a better example here. So after minting, it was listed for 0.25, not expensive, but then slowly they had to reduce their price. You see how significantly all the way to 0 0.105 to actually get that sale. That's not a good sign in a market where this is actually a rarer item even though it's early on in terms of the collection and how long it's been live. By the way, guys, if you've been enjoying this video, please click the subscribe button and click on the notification bell. I'll do a lot more videos in this series on NFTs because I have learned a hell of a lot about this. And like I said, I think I just think it's really easy at the moment, if I'm really honest with you. Um, yes, there's risks involved and stuff. And I wouldn't say that if I didn't mean it, like I'm comparing it to a lot of other kind of business models. And if you have a hobby like this, where you like buying and selling things, for example, eBay or stuff like that, or even if you're into art, this potentially is really good. It's actually probably a lot better than crypto coins, to be honest with you, because I find it a little bit more predictable as long as you don't get stuck holding things for long term with no, without any kind of real plan. With a lot of this stuff, you have to have a real plan. So what do I do when it comes to selling? So let, let me give you an example of what I would do. Let's, let's stick to this particular, let's say this was a good collection or actually let's pick a better collection. So I'm back on the uh, Crypto Bull Society. And then what I would do, like, let's say I was actually going to flip one of these. First of all, I wouldn't buy it now. I wouldn't buy some of the rarer ones now when they're already priced quite high. Because in my opinion, this is what happens. What you're doing here really is you're trying to flip for as much as possible. Let's start, say you started with one. In a short period of time, like a month, you're trying to double it to two and then double it again to four. I mean, that's what you're really trying to do. You don't want to buy something for five and then hold on to it for weeks or months, hoping it will make more. Um, that's kind of more a whale type strategy, which is for most of you, this is not what you're going to want to be doing. So you don't really want to be buying stuff that's already kind of appreciated significantly. Better in terms of a new project, so let's say this is the time frame and this is the first seven days, you want to be buying after two or three days and hoping to make a flip after six or seven days and then run. 
this is where you're selling, this is where you're buying, and then you're out, you're gone. And it doesn't matter if it goes to the moon afterwards. You've made your money and you can make that flip again and again, but this is predictable. The floor price is uh, uh, increasing, people are knowing more about the project, you've already got some proof of concept here. After the initial burst, you know that people want this, you see floor price going up, everything looks legit, you're seeing the rarer items selling for more, you're seeing people actually putting their money where their mouth is, paying for stuff. This is how you don't get caught out in dodgy scams and mints here at the beginning. Let it go to the secondary market first. I find that much safer. I prefer to just buy on OpenSea and flip on OpenSea and that's been working really well for me. I've not really been too keen on the mints and the whitelist and stuff like that. Although I know people make good returns on that, I just don't see it as a problem. If I can buy here at 0.5 or 1 and then flip for anywhere uh, between uh, 1 and 3 here later down the line, that's a lot of profit. We're talking, you know, tens of thousands of US dollars. So I'm going to leave it there. I don't want the video to get too long. Please let me know if you enjoyed the content. Comment below if you want me to do much more in-depth videos about how to flip NFTs. More than happy to do that. Thanks very much for listening.